Okay, in our last section, we were just uh, starting at this point, and I have about 15 minutes, and I'll, I'll probably get cut off on a regular basis, so I just wanted you to know sometimes it'll cut me off. And no worries, I'll just create the part two. So this is part two of creating paths and then with the pen tool and then turning those paths into a selection. We have selected the interior of the television screen and what I had been talking about in the very uh, last section is that if your uh, file is the background you've got to turn it into a layer because layers are the only thing that when you cut out parts of a layer they become transparent. If you're on a background and you delete let's say this interior you'll get the background color whatever it is so that doesn't work. This is how you turn a background into a layer just double click on it and lo and behold here it is and I could actually call this television when you click OK, this now is a layer. Now, backgrounds are, they're fine. Um, I don't think that, that you have to have a background. Sometimes you want one and sometimes you don't. The biggest thing to know is that backgrounds erase to your background color, whereas layers erase to transparency. Layers. This is now a layer. Now, I've got this edge and um, there's a couple things that we can do with this. One important part is to refine your edge and that's up in your select menu. We're refining the edge. This is fairly new and it's really wonderful to use in Photoshop and it just lets you view the selected area here under the view mode in certain ways. Probably the most important areas would be you know black so you can look at just sort of what's happening with the edge and it looks good. You can also view it on white and what's important about viewing it on white is that you can actually see part of that plastic outer sort of edge frame of the TV. And that's why we look at it is that you know I might want to refine this. Now that's why we have a view mode is just so that you can see a little better what you want and on black or on white are important. Um, the rest of these you know, the first one gives you the marching ants again, which we already had, and the overlay. Uh, this simulates something in, in silkscreen where you can actually still see the background area, and that can be really helpful to make sure you like your edges. And this red rublith um, just represents that outer region on black, on white, on layers, and so on. So just, just ways to see what you've got. And I like it looking at it because this black plastic is what I care about. Why, you know, I may not want that there. Now, the next section we'll get into, I'm going to wait. That's better done with furry objects like cats, um, hair, clouds, waterfalls, which I'm going to do in the next portion. So let's wait on that. But adjusting the edge is really important to smooth your edge out. And this really already is a smooth edge, pr primarily because we use the pen tool. A little bit of smoothing, but not a lot. Feather is important, and feathering just softens your edge so it doesn't look like you cut the shape out with scissors. And anywhere between 0.2 and 1.5 are really good for compositing. So I'm just going to come in here and highlight the one little zero. 0.2, 0 0.2. And that just softens the edge. And if you want to zoom in, let me zoom in on that to show you what that looks like. Because I want you to see it. So here it is without zero. And if you, and I'm just going to start feathering more and more. It's really just taking what was opaque and slowly each pixel is becoming more and more semi-transparent until there's nothing at all. And that's too radical. But it just shows you kind of what's going on. And we don't want a lot. We just want a little bit, a little bit of that to soften the edge. Now contrast does just the opposite and if you take it all up you can see what it's doing. It's really, I don't think it's really a very good look all the way up but sometimes just a tiny bit of that 
is going to give you a cleaner edge. I'm not going to use it this time, but shift edge is important. And what it does is it brings your selection in or out. Um, if you change your view mode, and I'll do that really quickly, to marching ants, you'll really see it. So I can say, oh my gosh, I'm selecting part of this black. Well, shifting your edge in then all the way will start to bring this in a little more. So that's why you have the ability to shift your edge in or out. I'm just going to do that a little bit. I'm not really getting rid of as much as I want. So I'm just going to kind of bring that back and we can continue to edit later. Now down in output and really is important to look at what kind of output you want, which means this selected area, you either want to cut it out and put it somewhere else, which we don't want. You know, we actually want to delete it. But just to show you, if I were going to place a selected area into another image, which we'll do in a minute, we would probably choose new layer with layer mask. But this time we want to leave it as a selection. Um, but you can see things like layer mask, which is great. New layer, only sometimes do I choose new layer and not very often. But the new layer with the layer mask is what we're going to be looking at this week. Um, later, later. Because we want to cut this out of the television, we're going to leave it as a selection and click OK. Now, what you've done there doesn't exactly look any different. You just have to know that if you go into Refine Edge and start uh, play, changing your sliders and making uh, you know specific changes, it will affect the selected edge. And I'm going to just back out, this is fit on screen. And now I'm just going to cut this out. Now I've cut it out and this is a layer so that that's transparent. Whenever you see this checkerboard, that represents transparency. I love this old dusty TV, that's pretty hilarious. And I also have my waterfall up here, so just to click on that and show you. I have the waterfall and I'm going to just bring this part into the other image. Um, and probably the best way to do that is to drop this layer into the television file so that I can really see what we want to keep. It's one way to work. And what I like to do in that case is usually go to the view menu and choose float all in windows because this will allow your files just to be sort of floating where you want to put them and in this case it helps you place files next to each other like this now see I I want to do it like that and that's why I like this is that you can whoops float them I just unfloated them pull this off you can kind of pull them off they're kind of like a file cabinet with files let me just show that to you again see there where are you they're um, basically, I'm creating more havoc than I really need to be doing. They're now all over the place, so sorry about that. Let's do that another day. We'll do that another time, but essentially I'm separating them so I can see both files. If I click on the television, I have the television file. And if I click on the waterfall, I have the waterfall file. And the other thing about it is you want to also make size comparis um, comparisons because what I want to do is place the waterfall and in both behind the television and then a copy of it on the on the front uh, so that it looks like the water is both we're watching the water behind the screen but parts of it is flow are flowing out so that's that's the goal this week is in next week is to be surreal surreal. So I'm going to click on the waterfall and one way that you can drop and drag uh, your layers into another file is by clicking on the waterfall, getting your layer here, clicking and dragging that right in to the file with the TV. And it looks a little funny here because it's in front like a picture covering the TV. So that's why over here we're going to actually drag it down behind your TV like that. Set it up so that, you know, I'm looking at the waterfall falling and I want to bring it down, down, down. 
so that you know we it'll be falling on onto the ground and I don't know what'll happen after that but we're gonna get as far as that point um, now to see where we want it to fall um, I might turn this TV TV layer opacity down just to see the water outside of this let me just show you click on the TV and turn my opacity down up here in the opacity section and you know I can turn it down and what I'm looking at is what's happening here like where is the water hitting and should I include this river kind of going off of the table could be really cool and so that's what I'm analyzing by turning it down I'm able to really look at where does the water land and how should it cascade down the rim of this Tell you, I don't know if I'll do this that well let's see how it works but you know the important part is not to get too attached to any major rager result you just want to have fun and I am I'm just gonna leave it like that and let's just hope for the best now I've got the television layer in front of the waterfall layer and when I set up these files the thing you want to remember is that image size is so important because you want to make sure that your files if I have a file here that's 1296 pixels by about a thousand um, with the television then this picture is not going to be need to be as big but certainly if I want it to flow over I've got to think about it being substantially about a little bit larger than that whole television so to speak so this is where compositing plays a role because you cannot enlarge Photoshop will let you but you will degrade your images and they will look horrible so don't enlarge ever just don't do it just say no and you'll be fine okay so here's the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate actually the waterfall image so that we've got one behind the TV and then when we duplicate this layer we're going to actually place another copy in front so watch this I'm gonna duplicate the waterfall layer let me title it so that you all can see what it is and I'm gonna duplicate that make a copy and drag that layer in front so that I've got a layer behind the TV and a layer in front and I don't want to move it and so the way you can do that is just click on position meaning don't move and the same thing here because you want them both to be right in front of each other now I need to well, we're gonna go ahead and um, select out this part of the image I'm gonna just back out a little zoom out a little so we can see the bottom where it ends and I'm I you could use your pen tool and we'll come back to it but in this next section you can use a variety of your tools and this is really one where I would probably either use my pen tool or because of time you could use your lasso um, in this case with this sort of ethereal water uh, you don't have to be as exact in precise you know uh, uh, selecting you know the pen tool will make the path the path will turn into a selection so I do want to see you use a combination of your pen tool and your your um, selections and we'll do more of these so I'm going to come in and just select the waterfall and the little bit of this river because it's gonna dribble off the table so to speak come on kinda get that and this little chunk will be on top of the other so only where it goes outside of the television screen is it really gonna probably pay, play a large role and we'll just see how it looks and I'm on that top copy it's important to be aware of what copy you're on and I've only locked the positioning so I can do other work to it and now and by the way we could have used our pen tool we're gonna to do a few more examples later of the pen tool and I'm going to go back to this time to refine edge on just the waterfall in this portion and let's look at it with black or white these are the two I like is sometimes you want to see what edge you have and 
I'm going to just leave it on white for a minute. So just get your view menu the way.